Hey, and welcome to another Software Development with Matt video. In this video, I'm going to be following my last one on PHP Storm, which you can find here somewhere, uh, where I showed how to set up database connections using PHP Storm's database tool. And this time we're going to step through how to do database definition language or DDL queries. You know, the ones where you create tables, drop tables, update tables, not update table, edit table. You know, you change the schema, you manipulate the schema and all that sort of good fun stuff. Anyway, before we get into it, make sure to give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Please consider subscribing to the channel and hit the bell notification icon. Otherwise, let's get into it. Now, as I said, I've got the database tool here opened and that I do that by clicking on database here on the far right hand side. And you can see that I have a SQLite schema opened and it has, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven tables, uh, two being internal to SQLite and five to my database. Now you can sort of tell it's SQLite partly because of the name and partly from the icon. If you want to know how to set up schemas in the database tool, then check out the video, which is on your screen now. Now, what we're going to do is I've already created something. So let's kind of go in a bit of a reverse odd order and edit the schema. So I'm going to right click or double tap because I'm on a Mac, if it would work for me. <laughs> and I'm going to say modify table. And that pops up the modified table window. And you can see here that it shows the columns and their types. You can see the key, you can see the indices, and you can see foreign keys. I didn't think SQLite respected foreign keys. Anywho, whatever. Let's start with something simplistic. Let's say that what I should have had was the street number, not just the street name. So I'm going to add that in, and I'm going to say street number if I could type and we're going to say int I guess you could have something like 3a post box 40 or PO box or something like that so let's just have it as text just keep this example simple um not null no we're not going to do that it doesn't have to be unique it's not part of the primary key and it's not an auto increment so we're going to skip all those um, and not add a default value because th th there's really nothing that makes sense um, and we're going to leave it at that. But before we jump in and execute that, you can see what we're going to execute because a SQL script or a, a SQL query has been auto-generated for us based on the values that we've added here. And it would also have been adjusted if we added these in, such as I said, primary key, which I'm not going to, unique. Oh, now it's really changed the query. Not what I wanted. <laughs> let's back out of that. Let's Let's try that again. Hang on. You're about to lose your changes. Yep, want to do that. And let's come back in and let's say modify. And let's bring that back up again and we'll say street number and we'll say it's text. Oh, and it's really nice how you can see here that it pops up the available types for you so you don't have to really sort of do much thinking about it. Sometimes there's so many that it's hard to keep them all in your head if you're not a guru at databases. Anyway, so we've got the alter table SQL query generated again. And you can see it's alter table addresses, add street number text, right? So let's execute that. And if I open that up, you can see that street number's there. However, let's say that I want something, I want these columns listed in what you could say is more of a logical order. What I want to do is I want street number to be before street name and after ID. So let's see if we can do that. Street number. Now, oddly, I swear I was op I opened this before and it worked. Ah, there we go. So for some reason, uh, you don't have the up and down arrows active. Maybe that's a bug. But if you click or I've got three fingers on my magic pad and drag it. <laughs> okay, I would have thought that would have worked. I'm sure that worked earlier. No, apparently it does nothing. Well, anyway, what I was sure I did earlier as I was fiddling around in this, hmm, <laughs> was that you could select one or more fields here. I kid you not, this worked. And then click up or down to move it around. 
Anyway, that's a little disappointing that that didn't work. What can we do here? Let's say we could add, well, I don't need another primary key, but let's see if we'd show you what it looked like if I did. You could give a name for it. Uh, you could say it's primary key or not. You could click column and then you could add one or more columns there. Now I'm not gonna do that. So let's see if I can back out of that. Hmm, that's really interesting. Ah, here we go. And then I'll click minus and you, I can back out of that change before committing it permanently. And we're back to the original primary key. Let's say now I wanted an indice or an index. So let's say I have lots of um, city. Maybe we my, my application is more fleshed out than it really is at the current time. And people were looking for uh, doing lots of queries on city and state. Maybe that's a thing in this particular application. So I'm going to add two indexes or some indices. And we're going to call it addresses index. Uh, allow for a bit of auto generation. And let's say addresses index. And let's say city. Uh, unique. Nope. Doesn't need to be. And let's say, what do we say? City. Ah, and that's also handy again. It pops up the available columns so you can only pick one of the available columns and not something magical you'll see the query is auto updating as we type sorting let's say ascending just for sakes of argument and that's what i want and let's add in another one and we'll say address index double underscore because i think there's a double underscore here and we'll say what do we say street name Put in, let's say, let's see, and watch it pop up. We'll go down to there, save ourselves a bit of time and our memory. Uh, click ascending, and then we'll have those. And let's now, let's now, just for the sakes of, of an interesting example, do a composite key and we'll say, uh, which order would it be? Street, name, city. Just because I want to have two columns. And we'll say, street name, and we'll do it in ascending order. We'll just lengthen that out a bit. And then we'll do add in another column, which is city. I'll have that in ascending order as well. So now we have potentially three new indexes. We've got the first one here, which is addresses index city, which has a covering index on the city column, addresses index street name, which has a covering index on the street name column, and addresses index street name city, which has covering indexes or indices on the street name and city columns. Uh, what do we have here? Modify existing object. Hmm. Ah, oh, that's right, because we're modifying existing table. So let's say, let's go to editor. Ah, right. Oh, that's actually interesting. I thought it would have done it in place. Anyway, let's go up. Let's get rid of that query. And now we, what it's done is taken the queries that it's generated and put it into a query console, which you can open from here if you want to. And now I'm going to use command and enter because I'm on the Mac. If you're on Windows and Linux, I think it's control enter. I'll find those keyboard shortcuts and put them in the description for this video. And I'm going to run that. Oh, hello. And ah, there we go. Now that's interesting because that one, I guess that one does one and that one does all of them. Let's go with that. And let's see if we scroll up. You can see here that, yep, it's run the first one, it's run the second one, and it's run the third one. Well, that's then really handy. Ah, and if we come over here to the right-hand side, you can see that we have three new indexes added onto our table. Well, that's really, really handy. Thank you kindly for that. <laughs> I sound like I'm going a bit mad, but it is a bit late at night here. Anyway, so let's do one more thing. I'm not going to drop a table or anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, well, actually, I'm going to have a quick look at renaming, which I'll right click or double two finger tap and do rename. And if I wanted to, I could rename this table from addresses to something else. It's kind of handy that it's automatically, the strings automatically selected. Um, by changing that, you would see, I guess we maybe we'll call it address. And you can see here it creates an altered table query. So you can see what would be run or would be run when we ran it. Uh, we could look for that uh, because it's part of the IDE. Maybe that's, well, that would be referenced somewhere in your code or your environment or configuration file. So we can automatically look for it and change it. Very handy. Uh, I'm not going to do that. 
Actually, what do we do with preview? Ah, uh, yes. Okay, so with preview, you can see here how it's referenced in all of these consoles. And that's not important because I was just experimenting with those queries. But you can see here in the database that it's important. Oh, okay, this change log isn't that important, nor is that. Ah, but in two of my classes, sorry, one of my classes, it is important. So it would be handy that it would change that for me. And oh, I'll just skip that because that's not essential. Um, we could do that, but I'm not going to. So I'll click cancel because I don't want to change the name of it. And now let's one do one final thing, which is let's theoretically add a new table. So I'll click new and we'll call it, let's just call it people. And here, as before, we have the columns, keys, indices, and foreign keys tabs. Um, I'm just going to add in, let's see, a column, let's say uh, ID. And we'll call that an int and then say that's a primary key. Note the query being generated as we go along. Click plus again and we'll say, what would you say, first name. And we'll say that's a text field. Um, none of these options are relevant. We could call that person Bob or John maybe. And then we'll say last name. Oops, if I get spell, we'll call that text as well. And maybe we'll say the person has an email address. I wish I had something more interesting than just text. And maybe phone number. And we'll just say in this case, it's int and we won't allow for like plus and then the country code and, and spaces and all that stuff. Just ultra simplistic. So then you can see here, uh, allowing for the size of the create new table window, that it's generated a SQL query for me that would be run um, reasonably nicely formatted. I probably would have done it a bit differently, but whatever. Uh, if we wanted to, we could always then, well, we can see the primary key. Um, we can maybe have a foreign key on something, but I don't know what I would link that to in this case. And then an indice, and we'll just say um, index full name, and then we'll say first name ascending, whoops, last name ascending. All right, so then you come down here, and then you see that after the create table query, it has a create index query. Um, in this case, it's, oh, hang on, sorry, correction from before. Execute in the database, I believe would do this straight away. Open in the editor, we then open the editor, which we have over here, and then we could change the query and whatnot. Sorry, I didn't catch that before, but now you know. So anyway, let's just run that, just to see something different from before. And you can see that the query wasn't opened into the editor, but it was run directly. And you can see that the table was created and added to our schema view here. If we open that up, yep, you can see the columns, primary key, primary key here, and the two, well, the index, and that it is a, that's curious for me. Anyway, didn't expect to see that. I wonder if we, do we see anything in the database changes? No, services. No. Anyway, just a little bit of a quick check there. Anyway, so that has been how to do DDL when using the database tool in PHP Storm. We've looked at creating, editing, and deleting schema items. Um, if you want to know anything more about that, I'll do my best to add relevant links in the description for this video. As always, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this and know when they come out, please consider, my friend, subscribing to the channel. And that way you will be notified. Oh, and it'd be great if you click the bell notification icon too. Uh, as always, as I always say, if you liked the video, otherwise, if you want to share your thoughts, feelings, ideas, your tips and tricks for working, for doing DDL with the database tool in PHP Storm, please add a comment down below. And as always, I'll see you in a future software development with Matt video. I'll see you then, my friend.